Hello again. Uh, today we will be looking at Gustave Courbet, a very influential artist uh, in the conversation of modern art, uh, especially when we think about the Impressionist and uh, a lot of the ideology that they're following of presenting kind of the contemporary uh, events. Gustav was one of the first artists to kind of look at the contemporary here and now uh, and to paint it amongst other things. Uh, again, when we look at this painting, Good Morning, uh, Monsieur Gustav, uh, Good Morning, Monsieur Courbet, uh, this is very much kind of the image that he's promoting. Uh, Gustav is not from Paris proper. He's actually from Ornon, uh, and this is farm country. Uh, and, and he very much always kind of projects this image, if you will, uh, out of being this kind of hillbilly, uh, from the sticks kind of farmer uh, type of person, even though his family was actually very, very wealthy uh, landowners out in the, it is true they were farmers, but they owned the farm, uh, so to speak. So, uh, but again, we need to look at this kind of in, in reference to what's going on uh, in contemporary events. And what we really need to kind of view uh, is what we have uh, is, is right around the end of Louis Philippe's resigns in, in 1848. We have Napoleon III uh, elected in 1852. So this is kind of the time period we're looking at. Uh, we have the very famous Franco-Prussian War uh, that occurs in 1870 and then from 1870 uh, to a little bit in 1871, as it says, three months, uh, we have the Paris Commune. And again, uh, this is really important because Gustav uh, is not on the side of Napoleon Napoleon III. He's actually on the side of the Paris Commune, uh, and he's actually kind of from that more of a perspective. He's more from the anarchist communist uh, wing, if you will, rather than being uh, established from the government. Uh, if we think about that in comparison to one of the other artists we just looked at, Delacroix, uh, again, a lot of what we can think of and, and look at uh, uh, through Gustave Courbet is, is a reaction to that type of ideology as well, uh, the romantic tradition in art. A lot of what he's doing uh, is, again, this ideology of, of showing realism, of showing the dirt in people's fingernails and, and really depicting life uh, as you would really, really kind of see it in front of you. Uh, he's very much influenced, and, and we know he did travel to Northern Europe uh, and was influenced by the Northern European style of art. And again, a lot of this, we have to remember, is, is a reflection of the religion of the time, the Protestant uh, Reformation occurring. So a lot of the art uh, is steering uh, from way back then even uh, towards this more uh, showing everyday life rather than showing religious events, which is something you more associate uh, with the Vatican, the South, Italy, uh, and that type of mentality. Already from the self-portrait from 1844, we can see that we, we are kind of dealing with an interesting person here. Uh, to make a modern comparison, I always think this looks like Johnny Depp. Uh, but when you look at this, again, self-portrait pulling back his hair, this face of uh, extreme emotion. Again, you can kind of already get this sensation from Gustav that he has uh, a bit of an ego about himself. And this is something that we, we definitely see carried forward uh, throughout his life. He thought of very much of himself uh, throughout and again he, he he thought of his style of painting as being uh, the quintessential way of doing things uh, uh, if you will again we still kind of get this this feeling of romanticism left over uh, from the previous kind of period of art but again uh, as we look at Gustav's career as he kind of moves forward he really does kind of come with this idea of painting the rural countryside and, and what we do see uh, is we see a lot of the work coming directly from uh, his home in Ornans. Uh, uh, like many, many artists uh, that are first starting out, you, you kind of paint uh, the people that are closest to you. That's why you usually see uh, a lot of self-portraits and you usually see uh, a lot of family members as well. This is his sister, I believe it's Zili, uh, Zili Corbet from 1848. Again, uh, just a nice, simplistic, realistic depiction of a person. Uh, uh, this is kind of what you would want if you went and got uh, uh, your portrait done, just a nice rendition, uh, centrally framed. You can kind of see, again, this is a, an early work in the uh, 
in his catalog, but we do have many portraits of his sisters. I think he also has two other sisters as well, again, uh, and then, you know, they're going to be readily available. But in addition to that, as I was mentioning, a lot of his subject matter does come from Ornan, so uh, it, it's kind of a different uh, a different thing that you're actually seeing uh, within the, the, the area of the salon. Now, even though he's kind of projecting himself as this almost kind of country hillbilly, uh, we do know that he was very, very uh, engaged within the philosophical and political circles uh, that we have within Paris at the time. We do know that he was uh, friends with Baudelaire, as we can see from this portrait. We see Baudelaire uh, pop up later on in, in one of his other paintings, one of his more famous paintings, The Artist's Studio, as well. Uh, and we also know that he is friends uh, with philo the philosopher Pierre-Joseph uh, Proudhon, Proudhon was a communist and, again, uh, had much more of a political uh, activity than, than um, uh, I will, you would normally associate with Courbet. Uh, again, Gustav is really uh, projecting this image of, of being this simple person, but when you really look at the people he's kind of dealing with uh, and the people that he's kind of interacting with, uh, 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 a lot of them are, are of the political mind of the time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he does travel to the Netherlands around this time. Uh, Wissling, I believe is how you say this man's name, uh, is actually a... a um, an art agent that helps him uh, and secures some work for him in the Netherlands. But again, when he travels to the northern part of Europe, uh, this is when we really do kind of see uh, this transition in his work as much as anything. And we have to kind of think about the work that you would see uh, if you travel to the Netherlands. You would see a lot of, uh, again, things like Rembrandt things of this nature, again, depicting more of the social reality of life rather than uh, trying to depict these kind of uh, uh, more unearthly images having to do with some type of spiritual connection uh, or even blatantly religious imagery. Again, uh, when we look at the work of Gustave Courbet, this isn't really what we see. So we have his first real success in 1849 uh, with the acceptance of After Dinner at Ornans uh, to the Paris Salon. And as you can see, it's a gold medal winner. Uh, again, when we look at this and we look at the depiction, we can kind of see this influence of Rembrandt. We can see this darkness in the background uh, and then kind of penetrating out of the figures themselves. But again, uh, the, the whole idea behind this painting, the whole uh, uh, truth, if you will, behind it is this is what uh, life would really be like after dinner uh, in, in a small community like this. If you look at the gentleman, again, we have this wide range of complexity. We have this wonderful man uh, playing the fiddle, but you'll notice not everyone at the table is playing so much attention. It looks like the two other gentlemen, uh, one of them is, is, I believe, asleep, and one of them seems like they're nodding off. But then again, if you notice, they also have drinks in their hands. Uh, this could be the cause as much as anything. So the first really uh, probably renowned painting that we have uh, by Gustave Courbet is the Stonebreakers. And again, uh, the story goes he encountered these people as he was kind of uh, walking down the road. And this is really kind of meant to show the harsh, real anguish of life. Again, if we look at this, uh, we have a very, very young person and a very, very old person, uh, rather than somebody who you would think of in, in the prime of their life actually engaging in this activity. But again, when we look at how he's depicting this, uh, this is this is how you would see these people if you were just running into them walking down the road. We have uh, the young man's shirt is torn in the back, and uh, the older gentleman's pants are a patchwork of, of patches, of leather patches put together uh, rather than being of a solid material. And again, we can see the wear uh, not only on their clothing, but that wear is kind of carried forward uh, into the people themselves. We have a second rendition of the same type of painting. Uh, again, it could very well be the same gentleman in both of the paintings. Uh, this is almost a mirror image. But again, uh, if we focus on one of the details, if we look over at the left side uh, and we see the pot and, and what looks like a little picnic, again, uh, this is kind of the mark of reality, as I was, I was kind of referring to. You'll notice the pot's lid is a jar. It's not perfectly set uh, on, on top of things. It's not a closed lid if you will. And, and again, uh, if you think about reality and you think about all these little things, these little 
aspects of life that aren't quite perfect. Uh, that's as much, I think, what Gustav is trying to show us and capture as anything else. Again, a lot of this is the pushback uh, against the romantic ideology of art, this uh, uh, you know, sweeping colors and, and this idea of showing this uh, almost a, a vision of something occurring in a different life. Oh, this wonderful piece again showing the peasants and anytime you have a, a gentleman walking a pig that's got to be a winning painting as far as I'm concerned. Again, uh, uh, just kind of a depiction of, of everyday life and again we kind of even think about paintings like this and I often wonder uh, if in some ways he's not idealizing uh, the peasantry, even making them look more as if they were peasants uh, than you might even see in real life. But again, uh, the idea of just running into this person Person walking down the road, walking their pig, uh, uh, getting on into town or, or what have you. Now we do have a tradition of showing peasants within European art, but usually what you'd find uh, is it would be isolated to these small, small type of genre paintings where you would see them in the more northern European style uh, landscape. Again, very, very small in proximity to a very larger landscape. Uh, one of the things that Gustav Courbet does is he takes this aspect of the art and he really makes it the centralized subject matter. Uh, when we look at something like Barrelet or Nons, this is a massive painting uh, in comparison to what anyone would have painted uh, in, in view of, of again, uh, the peasantry before this. And again, when we look at this, he's really showing uh, this kind of frank reality of life. Uh, over on the left side, we have the procession actually bringing the person to be buried and again when we look at this and we look at all the different elements uh, it's not necessarily the nicest burial kind of scene most of the people are looking away. Uh, some of them look bored. When we look at the two gentlemen in red, uh, it's often been said that they almost look like they might be intoxicated. Again, uh, uh, the real life, the real aspects of life that you think about this uh, uh, in terms of, of what would actually be experienced, this is what Gustav is showing. Again, we have images like this, and I believe that this is, again, uh, another one of his sisters, just a woman falling asleep while sewing. But uh, this is also a nice display of, of the different types of work he can actually do, uh, showing these kind of fine details that we don't normally associate uh, with these larger sketched uh, or these larger works like the burial at Ornans. Uh, that again, uh, when you think of the massiveness of scale, you don't have these nice little pretty details like these wonderful little flowers, etc., uh, that we see in this type of thing. But again, uh, when we look at his career, he's starting to gain some momentum. A lot of these paintings uh, are very, very popular. Again, uh, we have the we have the Universal Exhibition. We know uh, that that he uh, essentially sets up his own tent on the outside uh, of, of the exhibition, and we know that the burial at Ornans uh, is one of the paintings he does show there. When we look at a work like this one, uh, again, most likely his family members, but uh, it's the fine attention to detail. And again, when we look at all of these wonderful objects that we see in here uh, as they're kind of gleaning through these seeds, I believe uh, many of these objects aren't even recognizable by people uh, who wouldn't be associated with the activity. Uh, again, we have this small child kind of looking in. Uh, to the cupboard and the, the women, I believe, again, are most likely his sisters in this. But uh, just another example, if you will, of, of kind of this simplistic or non style uh, that he's trying to show in Paris. And, and if we think about this type of painting in, in juxtaposition to the other types of work uh, that would be shown at this time, uh, it really is kind of a unique thing that he has. It is kind of a unique little calling card uh, this this man from uh, out in the sticks, if you will.